Tony, is it safe to say that even with the starters you were missing, you did not see this coming? Oh, well, first of all, I mean, I, I owe an apology to the administration, uh, to the players in the locker room, the staff. Uh, I did not do a good job of having them prepared to play. Uh, so, so what you saw out there today, that's on me. And, um, and I got two weeks to, to really figure it out, uh, to, to have us uh, ready to play our best football down the stretch. Um, you know, there's, there's no excuses. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter who's in there. You know, the expectation is the expectation. Um, and, you know, the other way you look at it is, man, guys got an opportunity and they got to be they got to be ready. But that starts with me. So I have to make sure that I have them uh, prepared and ready to go uh, to be able to, to compete uh, and execute at a high level. I know that a game does not come down at all to one play, but how big was that swing when you have first and goal at the one and end up having to get a field goal? So yeah, you know. You know, right there, it's first, first and one, and and man, Josie's he's he's in there, he's geared up, he's ready to go, and we just have a bad snap, and so now instead of us having a chance to to go up by seven, you know, you're, now you're going to be chasing four points at at some at some point, but you know, I'm not going to put that uh, the whole game on that particular play because uh, there's there's going to be a lot more plays as we watch it to see that we had opportunities to swing the momentum back in our direction and we didn't capitalize. Was there any thought to go to Musket earlier in the game, given that Calandry was, was struggling to get the ball out, or yeah. were you going to stick with Calandry no matter? What? Well, you know, there 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 wasn't a ton of discussion because, you know, in fairness to Calandry, there wasn't some time, there wasn't much time. You know, he was getting his back foot in the ground, and and guys were on him. And so uh, I thought he battled, considering the circumstances, you know, to just keep playing, uh, was getting hit and, and sacked. And, and so the, the discussion didn't really take place until later in the game. Because, um, again, in a situation like that, we felt like uh, his ability to elude and escape, you know, gave us, you know, the best opportunity uh, amidst the struggles that we had uh, up front today. And then on the uh, – on the first and goal play from the one. Yeah. Why not the Broster House package yeah. you guys have used a lot? Uh, well, you know, honest answer, you know, you find out that your center's out on Friday afternoon and the center you got in there hasn't practiced, you know, that particular play. And, you know, I've, from a mindset, you go with what they're comfortable doing and that whole drive, you know, we had been, we'd been in the gun. All right, so you don't anticipate that. So I knew we were going to get questions about it, but I stand firmly on the decision. You know, you got a you got a center in there that that hasn't uh, had a chance to really practice that. Um, so that and he'd been snapping in the gun uh, all uh, all, uh, all all drive up to that point. So, what was the message from you to this locker room after this game, and what what have you seen from them and with their reception to it? Yeah, so the the message was, man, we got to take ownership of it. You know, <laughs> at the end of the day. Right, uh, we can't. There's nowhere to hide, right? Like, and it's it's a it's a it's a life lesson too, right? So whatever you're running from in life, eventually it's going to track you down, and you're not going to be able to hide. And today, uh, you know, we, we missed an opportunity to grow and 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 develop as a program. So we can't hide from it. We got to own it. You know, at the end of the day, uh, hopefully nobody will look to the right or the left and start pointing fingers, except for they look straight ahead in the mirror and say, what can I do better? You know, how can, how can I uh, make sure that my fundamentals are better? How can I have more appreciation for my opportunity and for my teammates? And then how can I, you know, have a more mental and physical toughness to be able to go out and, and execute and, and compete? So that was the message, you know, to our, to our guys. I mean, we got a lot of football left. Man, we're, we're scrapping, we're fighting. And then also, too, the message to these guys is I've seen it. You know, that's probably the most frustrating thing is, man, I've seen these guys perform and, and play at a high level. So I know they're capable of it, but it all comes down to uh, decisions, daily decisions. Um, and today we just we didn't have our minds in the right place. And again, uh, I take ownership because that's my fault. My job as a head coach is to make sure that collectively everybody's on the same page, pulling in the same direction with the same mindset. And I, and I failed at my job today. Yeah, with how Musket has done the last two games, is there any consideration, or do you still think that Anthony Calandria gives you the best chance to win? I mean, we'll go, we'll go evaluate it, right? I'm, I'm not ready to answer that question, you know, uh, especially in the heat of the moment. We got to go evaluate the uh, um, the film and kind of see what happened. But we're going to be fair, you know, and we want to win football games. And you know, uh, it's been good to see you know Tony come in and uh, and have some success. Uh, but we we got we got a lot of things to to discuss uh, these next two weeks. Would you say this game was lost in the trenches, not only offensively with the offensive line, but also stopping a run for UNC? Hampton was a monster for UNC. 
Yeah, I mean, every game is going to come down to the trenches, right? And and I've been very fortunate to, to, to be around some great skill guys. But at the end of the day, man, the game of football starts up front. And so you got to be able to run the ball. You got to establish the run. You got to be able to protect the quarterback. And then you got to be able to stop the run and then get after their quarterback. Uh, so so we got a lot of work to do. Uh, we'll figure it out. I hate it for Jimmy. You know, Jimmy Christ, uh, you know, early diagnosis, he's got a broken ankle. Man, I hate that for him. Um, uh, you know, because we were going to need him, but but more importantly for him, man, even battling injury. So so really be thinking about him over the next couple of days as he deals with uh, deals with that injury, and then hopefully we'll we'll get some of our guys back, you know, up front uh, to help us uh, down the stretch. Uh, final two minutes of the first half. What was kind of the mood in the locker room? What did you say to them in the locker room? You know, for how much of a shift in the game it happened yeah. in those last two minutes. So, so uh, what I said at halftime, I can't repeat, uh, to be honest with you, because I was just trying to challenge the guys. I was trying to flip the mindset, right? Trying to get the guys to to, to snap out of wherever they wherever they were uh, mentally. Uh, but obviously, I didn't say the right things. Um, so I got to, you know, evaluate myself to make sure that 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 one, I have them prepared uh, better mentally, and then I can figure out which buttons to push. You know, when they're when they're having a, a tough time to get them back, you know, back to where they need to be. I know your your front seven is is doing everything they can, but coming into the year with the experience, particularly up front, did you think you'd be getting more of a pass rush than you have? And and what kind of pressure does that put on you know the yeah. back four, back five? Actually, I thought early in the game our front four was doing a better job. You know, I thought that they were they were they were affecting the quarterback and making him flush the pocket and move. Um, but when when you're when you're letting them stay ahead of the chains, man, it's tough. It's tough to uh, to do there. And you know, um, what we we are we are what we what we are, right? So if that means we got to get pressure by by simulated pressure by bringing second level guys, um, it is it is what it is. But we'll evaluate it these next two weeks and see can we uh, gain some more production of actually getting the quarterback on the ground uh, uh, down the stretch here in these last four games. Yes, yeah, well, that's what we hope. You know, I, I think Clary is getting better. Uh, you know, each day, just in terms of of managing the swelling. You know, that's what it's going to be on him. Um, you know, at some point, we know he's going to have to go in and get it fixed, right? But now he's just trying to manage the swelling so that he can so that he can perform. Because the biggest thing is you don't want to put a young man out there. Because one thing I know about Clary is, I man, he'll lay it on the line for this football team. Uh, but but you want to put him out there when he has a chance to protect himself and he's not quite ready yet. And hopefully, over the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll get. We'll get several guys. You know, James Jackson. Hopefully, uh, Brian will be back, and we get Furnish back uh, in the next couple of weeks um, as we go down the stretch.